you are. Come on, church, lift your voice and tell him. and tell him this evening yes you are yes you are yes you are you are Yahweh yes you are yes you are Yahweh yes you are we love you, Jesus. You one more time. Give it to him. You are Yahweh. Jesus. 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 Beautiful, beautiful Jesus. Yes, you are Yahweh. Yes, I'm on. The Master is here. Beautiful Jesus. The one who loves you. The one who cares about you. Your helper is here. Ah, With everything inside of you, tell him. Yes, you are. You are In your own words, just talk to him. In your own words. <laughs> Beautiful Jesus. Beautiful Jesus. Come on, talk to him. Tell him how beautiful he is. Shamali yere mambo via dole de ya. Shahala fiere ya. Ah 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 ah. We are here to worship you, sir. We are here to honor you, sir. Beautiful 
Jesus se si, si. Somebody just love on Jesus this evening. Ah. Oh. <laughs> More than a song. I am gonna be better. Let it be the core of your soul. I'll be Yes, Lord, 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 yes, Oh yes, Lord. Oh yes, Lord. Ah. Yes, Lord. Ah. 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 Ah.
Jesus.
Yesus lo
Jesus. Jehovah. 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 No man can do them. You are doing it again. Doing it again. The things you're doing right here this night. No man can do. They are kings. They are kings. <laughs> there are mountains and there are the roads. Only, only Yeshua. Ah, we ran away. To his kingdom, there will be no end. They are kings.
To his kingdom His kingdom His kingdom will be known Only Yeshua Only Yeshua ah. We reign forever We reign forever To his kingdom His kingdom ah. 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 Only Yeshua will reign forever, reign forevermore to this kingdom. Only Yeshua. I never care and I feel but to know me. Oh. Here comes a boy child. Here comes a boy child with a scepter in his hand. He rules the nations. He rules the nations. He rules the nations. He rules the nations. Here comes a boy child. a boy child with a scepter in his hand. He rules the nations. He rules the nations. He rules the nations. He rules the nations. Here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus. With a scepter in his hand. Scepter in his hand. A scepter in his hand. He rules the nations. He rules the nations. He rules the nations. Here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus. With a scepter in his hand. With a scepter in his hand. He rules Uganda. He rules Uganda. Here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus. With a scepter in, in his head. He rules Uganda. He rules Uganda. Ah. He rules Uganda. Here comes. Here comes. Here comes. Here comes. A bad child. Ah, ah, ah. With a scepter in his head. He rules the nation. Who's the nation? Jacob's well. Here comes. Will never do. I will go from you. This old world will never do. I will go from you. Jacob's well. Jacob's well. Will never do. I will do from you this hard word will never do I will do from you Jacob's well Jacob's well will never do I will draw I will do from you Lord. this old world this hard word will never do I will draw I will do tonight you. Jacob's well Jacob's well I will draw, I will draw from you, Lord. This old world, this old world, it will never do. I will draw, I will draw from you. Jacob, well, Jacob's well, will never do. I will draw from you. This old world, it will never do. It will never do.
Jesus. 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 Only you can satisfy. Jesus. Jesus. Only you can satisfy. Jesus. Only you can satisfy me. Jesus. This one will come never. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. My Jesus. My Jesus. My Jesus. My Jesus. Ah.
in an evening for lovers this evening is for lovers not for the stick ah. Be with 
with you and I feel like presence
Let this 
Help us come! Help us come! Anila do! Anila do! Anila do! She did it, did it, did it, she did it, did it, did Don't hold back yourself! Don't hold back yourself! Release everything, man! Oh, 
Suddenly, 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 para na 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 Like rain, like rain, like rain, like rain, like rain, like rain. There is a flood carrying you. I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Oh, Galapina, she never know. Real Nili Bogala, Farakula Rama, Aira Bola, she de 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 de. Kutu kutu kutu, red kutu kutu kutu, red kutu 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 kutu. What a day, what a day in your life, what a beginning of season in your life. Oh, 
prepare the Holy Communion. You can just go to your seats, please. Thank you.
Adam and Eve messed up. God dealt with that issue by raising an altar. And that has become the pattern of God's intervention throughout the history of man. And every time there is a challenge, All that God requires of you and me is to lift an altar. I shared with you on Sunday, it was on Sunday or Wednesday, when no came out of that ark, all he saw was devastation, utter destruction everywhere he turned. He could see no sign of life. How did he respond by raising an altar? But to just bring a conclusion to it all, how did God deal with the fall of man? The Bible says in Romans, I believe three, that all have sinned and have fallen short of God's glory. Whether the patriarch, whether the matrix of faith, they were all under the same judgment because anyone who was born of a woman and a man inherited that sin nature. We even saw it. Even Noah who found grace in the eyes of the Lord. After God had destroyed everything, God still makes the same declaration and he says that the imagination of man and he was speaking about Noah and his children whom he had rescued from destruction. He said their imagination from their youth, man has become flesh and everything that flows out of him is evil. So he caps the number of years a man should live so that he can limit the kinds of evil he can come up with because the longer a man lives, the more evil he can become. So God had to reduce the number of years of man so that however creative they become in their evilness, at least there's a limit to which they can live. So Noah raised an altar and God swore would never destroy the earth again. That means an altar speaks to the heart of God. We saw when Jacob was running away, going to his mother's the brother, the uncles. He met God in the plain. And in that place, he saw angels ascending and descending on him. And he made a very powerful statement. He said, this is none other than the gate of heaven. So an altar is a gate. A gate through which man can traffic either the things of God or the things of the enemy into the realms of man. But as for us, we have chosen to use our altar to draw the heavenly into the earth. As Jesus said, when you pray, say, he said, by began by worship. And by the way, I want to encourage each one of you, worship, adoration, praise, blessing the Lord is one of the 
the ways you build a very powerful altar that speaks in the heart of heaven. So do not limit when you think of an altar, don't just think of prayers only. It's a place where you pour your heart before the master in adoration, surrender, submission, worshiping. You throw yourself into his arms. That's what David was known for. David was a man of the altar in that he used his altar to raise praise and worship and adoration. And God found him as a man after his own heart. And the Bible says that the only tabernacle of all the tabernacles in the Old Testament that God says is going to be restored is the tabernacle of David. It's the tabernacle where praise and worship was done 24-7. Every hour of the day, there were priests ministering to the Lord in song and worship. And brings me to John chapter 1 where Jesus spoke to Nathanael and he said, before you came I saw you sitting under a fig tree and Nathanael says, surely the son of God and say, you believe because I said I saw you wait when you see the angels doing what? ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Now we first saw the mention of that statement when Jacob had a dream where the angels were ascending and descending on him and he said, this is the gate of heaven. So God was bringing us to a place where altars, besides being probably a physical location, but more so an altar is your heart. A true altar is your heart. Jesus said, you will see the angels ascending and descending over me. That means you can create an ambience where there is continual spiritual activity between you and heaven as your heart overflows with all kinds of prayer and praise and worship. That's why Apostle Paul said, pray without ceasing because altars much as we come here, but more so altars are more or less our heart. The voice of your heart becomes the speakings that God hears in heaven and causes divine activity to take place. That's what Jesus said. You will see angels ascending and descending over me. And that's what should be happening to each one of us. That everywhere we go, there has to be angelic activity going on over our lives because our hearts are overflowing with what? With prayers, with worship, with praise. David said, you surround me with the song of what? Of deliverance. Somewhere he said that a song which is a prayer unto God, a song in the night which is a prayer unto God. There comes a place for a true believer who understands communion with God where there is a continuous outpouring from your heart towards heaven. And seizing flow. That's the main reason why the Holy Spirit has come to indwell you and me. So that's a continuous flow. The Bible says we do not know what, what to pray, how to pray, what to pray for, but who? The Holy Spirit comes and helps us in our infirmities, our sicknesses, infirmities. So among the many infirmities the Holy Spirit comes to help us in is in the area of what? Of prayer. So it takes you on and he begins to pick it up. Say, Holy Spirit, please help me. So you are the mobile altar. When we come here, we congregate as a family and we join our faith. And of course, you know, 
the temperature becomes strong, higher than ever before. So finally, how did God respond to man's fall? He raised the most powerful altar ever. The Bible says the Son of God hung between heaven and earth. Jesus became that altar. Who is still speaking to this day? The Bible says we have not come to Mount Sinai. But we have come to which mountain? Mount Zion. We have come to the company of innumerable angels, the spirit of just men made perfect. We have come to God, the judge of all the earth. We have come to Jesus. Who is he? The mediator and the blood of what? Sprinkling that speaks better things. That doesn't say we are coming. It says we have come. That's where we are right now. Our prayer, our praise, our intercession is all in agreement with what the blood is what is speaking. Say, Holy Spirit, please help me. The same Bible says Jesus ever lives to make what? Intercession. He said, my father's house shall be called what? House of prayer. Who is the father's house? You. Say, I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you are whose fathers? You are the father's house. So you have become what house? The house of prayer. So there's a continuous flow of prayer, intercession, praise, worship, thanksgiving. All these uh, activities that take place where? At the altar. Not only prayer. It can be, remember when Paul was speaking about this communion, he said, Jesus said, when you do this, you declare my death until I do what? Until I come. What was he trying to say? Declare means you are pronouncing the benefit of what the cross has done for you. That so you declare by his stripes, I've been redeemed. So whatsoever the blood of Jesus has done is what we declare as we partake of this communion. So it is a declaration, a bold declaration to who? To the enemies, to anything that contradicts or tries to make a mockery of the cross. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, whatsoever is trying to make a mockery of the cross of Jesus in my life, let it come under your judgment this very evening in the name of Jesus. You are judged, you are condemned, and you are eliminated out of my life. Praise the Lord. Say, I'm a mobile altar. And the Lord is speaking to us. I've said it here very strongly to take our prayer to a level that has never been before. I don't know why, but one thing I know, when seasons have changed and God wants to do something prayer is one of the ways where you heighten angelic activities because angels are very much involved in fulfilling destiny praise the Lord read throughout the scriptures angels are involved and angels they only move where the word of the Lord is being declared where prayers are being made Jesus was in that garden he was downcast when he began to pray in accordance with the will of the father what happened an angel showed up and did what and strengthened him so be sensitive because there's going to be lots of angelic activities among us as we give ourselves to a, not a religious but heartfelt altar practice and altar practice, again, I say, does not only mean praying. It includes praise, worship, declaration of the word, meditation, all these things. Praise the Lord. Am I communicating to you? Do this thing continuous because the seasons in the realm of the spirit are not ordinary. 
Storm is gathering. Storms of blessing. Storms of transformation. Shiftings of level. New things are beginning to happen. And you need to run. You know what a sail is? Have you ever seen these old canoes? And they have this triangular kind of like bed sheet. It's what we call the sail. If you don't raise the sail, the wind will not benefit you. You get the point? So through prayer, we lift up the sail so that the wind of the Spirit can carry us. Am I making sense to you? Say, Holy Spirit, help me to be sensitive to what you're doing right now. And what I'm saying is not only here, but across the entire globe. But I want you to take it very personal. You remember when Jesus, I think it's in John, I know it's John chapter 6, one of those chapters where Jesus had just finished feeding people. Then he went to pray and he told his disciples to go to the other side. And the Bible says Jesus was praying and at around three he came. He still found his disciples struggling to do what? To cross the lake. And when they saw Jesus, oh, say, Holy Spirit, open my eyes. When they saw Jesus, what did they say? May you not mistake the presence of God for a ghost. I pray. Help had come. And what had they seen? A ghost. Many have missed God just like that because he didn't come the way they expected him to. The Bible says, then we used to know men after the order of the word, the flesh. But now we know men after the spirit. So be a man and a woman of what? Of the spirit. And prayer, fasting, seeking God, worship is one of the ways through which you increase your spiritual sensitivity so that you do not throw away the blessing God has brought to you and call it what? A ghost. Had it not been for the mercies of God, they would have missed Jesus. Jesus said, it is I, I am not a ghost. And remember, they had begun traveling at 6 p.m. and 3 a.m. They hadn't yet reached. But as soon as Jesus entered their boat, the Bible says immediately they were on the other side. That means with what is coming, speed is coming into your life. Things are going to happen so fast. Are you hearing me? But to only those who will welcome Jesus into their board and not call him what? A ghost. Say, Holy Spirit, open my eyes. Amen. The Bible tells us both the seeing eye and the hearing ears who has made them. I pray you'll ask the Lord to help you. You can be sensitive to the Spirit. The, the saddest thing that can ever happen to any people is their lack of sensitivity. To who? To the Holy Spirit. When you miss seasons, it's gone. Remember, God has established the earth and the earth runs on a cycles. Seed, time, harvest, winter, springtime, all. So God says the earth runs on what? In cycles. If you miss the cycle, you have to wait for another season before you can pick it up. That means you lose time. Say, Holy Spirit, renew my sensitivity. Praise the Lord. So among the many things that we are going to pray to the Lord to help us, oh, I'm sorry, just give me two more minutes as we take our communion. The Bible says when they took the Holy Communion, their eyes were open and they recognized Jesus. May your eyes be open this evening as you partake of what? Of this communion. That you can be able to perceive and know Jesus. Tell him and say, neighbor, these are not ordinary days. So do not respond in an ordinary manner. You also need to change the way you do your stuff. Last scripture. I want to give it to me in the message version probably. Trust me, I won't go far. 
2 Corinthians chapter 1 from the message version. I'm starting from verse number 8. There are the verses put together. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 message version. We don't want you in the dark, friends, about how hard it was when all this came down on us in Asia province. It was so bad, we didn't think we were going to make it. Who is speaking here? Apostle Paul. Paul said things were so bad, they got to a point where they thought they were not going to make it. Let's continue. We felt like we had been sent to what? To death row. That it was all over for us. Have you ever felt like that before? I mean, have you ever felt like that before? Okay, I know you have never. But for those who have, you're not alone. Apostle Paul also was there. He felt a greater point in one of his journeys. He said he thought it was all over. As it turned out, it was the best thing that could have, have happened. Oh, beautiful. Say it is the best thing that could have happened to me. Why? Instead of trusting in our strength, our wits to get out of it, what happened? We were forced. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus said we were forced to do what? To trust God totally. Not a bad idea since he is the God who raises the dead. It is never over until God says it is over. Tell your neighbor that. That's what Apostle Paul was trying to say. Next verse. Let's go on. And he did it. Somebody say he did it. He rescued us from certain doom. Have you ever been rescued before? Ask your neighbor. Have you ever been rescued before? What is the answer? Okay. He will do it again. Say never. He will do it again. Ah, say never. He will do it again. Say never. He will do it again. I love that and say, rescuing us as many times as we need rescuing. That is your answer. Ah, as many times as you need rescuing, you will be rescued. Tell your neighbor that. Ah, come on, tell them properly. Now, this is the most beautiful part of the message I wanted to share with you. Then I'll let you eat your communion. Let's go. Next. Let's read together. You and your prayers are a part of the rescue operation. <laughs> Look at them and say, you. And what? Uh-huh. Let's continue. I don't want you in the dark about that either. I can see your faces even now lifted in praise for God's deliverance for us. A rescue in which your prayers played such a crucial part. That's why God is calling us to do what? Because prayer is the what? The rescue or pirate. Lift up your offering. No, forgive me. Praise the Lord. We shall lift it later on. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Say, Heavenly Father, like you broke bread and the eyes of the disciples were opened to discern you this evening. Let the scales fall of our eyes. Let the dullness leave our hearts. Let the wax fall off our ears. Help us to be sensitive to your guidance, to your leading, to whatever you say. As we eat now, we thank you for this our deliverance from insensitivity in Jesus' name. Amen. You may eat and drink. grab all of your offering 
I'm sorry for taking longer than I should have. Forgive me. Please, I encourage you. It is important to discern, season, and respond appropriately. I don't have much time. I would have elaborated much more on that scripture, but I don't have that time. Please be sensitive. Jesus told Peter, Satan has done what? Has asked for you, and Peter was so full of himself. He said, no. He couldn't tell her. The next thing we find Peter falling apart. Even when Jesus expected him to pray, what did he find him doing? He found him sleeping. The disciples were all asleep. He did not mention anyone's name except whose name. He said, Peter, even you, look at him as a neighbor. What is your name? Then mention that person's name. Yeah. Even you. Uh, Praise the Lord. Let the rest do what? But not you. Not, not you. Yeah. Peter missed an opportunity because of what we call self -control. Lord will give me the grace to share this message. We need to learn to put our faith and confidence in who? In God alone. Paul said we were forced to do what? To trust God. We were forced to trust God. I pray you will not be forced to trust God. Begin to trust God right now. Abalala. Let's lift our offerings. Say, Heavenly Father, we honor you with our offering. You are our source. We come before you with a fraction of what you have blessed us with to acknowledge you as our Lord, our source, our strength, our provider. Thank you for this opportunity. It's a privilege, Lord, to receive from me in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming. I love you. You're blessed. I live forever. The Lord is with you. I will see you in the morning dew. Nothing like the morning dew. Beautiful moment. I'll see you for the overnight on Friday.